Do you consent to this interview recording? Yes, I do. My name is Karen Schoen, and I am currently a director of the Florida Panhandle Patriots and a consultant for the Agendas. I've been traveling all over the country exposing UN Agenda 21. And now, because I believe in truth, education, conversation, and action, I'm running for office in Florida State District 5, which comprises Jackson, Washington, Holmes, Walton, and North Bay counties. Thank you. On November 4th ballot, there is an amendment, number one, to the Florida Constitution titled Florida Water and Land Conservation Initiative. There are opponents and proponents on this amendment. Please describe some opponents' views. Well, at this point, I would have to say that I am an opponent of this amendment, but not because of conservation. I believe in conservation. What I do not believe in is what this amendment attempts to do, and that is to deplete the Florida budget from 33% of the tax of the dock stamps, which is a tax on real estate, which usually goes for the poor and the elderly. The people supporting this amendment believe and have told everyone that this amendment will be revenue neutral. However, history shows us that when you deplete one program from funding and you give it to another program, eventually that program comes back in the form of a new tax. In this case, what will happen is the elderly and the poor will have no program, there'll be a lack of money, the legislature will turn around and say to us, we have no money, we may have to raise taxes, and when the people say no new taxes, we will be told, what's wrong with you? Don't you like the poor and the elderly? These are the way these programs usually work. Nothing is revenue neutral. The government does not create, they take. And when you take money, this is what happens. I am against this program primarily because of lack of oversight. When an item becomes a, a, an amendment on the Constitution, it happens automatically. And when you automatically take that amount of money and you give it to groups that are conservation groups and you have no oversight, they begin to feel powerful and turn around and will dictate to us how we can use our private property. They'll do things like a puddle becomes wetlands, a bird becomes an endangered species. And soon after that, individuals will lose their private property and their water rights. Our country was founded on our ability to accumulate wealth by ownership. And land ownership is one of the greatest accumulations of wealth. It enables us to leverage land, accumulate money, and use that money for any type of business, recreation, family, whatever we desire. But it does allow us to accumulate wealth. And that was the goal of our founding fathers. For they believed that innovation and creation comes when wealth is accumulated. This amendment will strip us of that ability. In addition to that, as land comes off the tax rolls, which it will, because when land goes into conservation, it is no longer taxable and cannot be developed for future use and future taxation. What happens to our state and to our local communities? Well, as I've been traveling around the district, I have not met any commissioner who has said to me, gee, Karen, if we lose that land and that $10,000 tax base, we're going to be lowering our taxes. It doesn't happen that way. What they will do is say, we've lost that revenue stream, and therefore, your taxes will go up. The other problem that I have is the lack of oversight. This is a major issue. And I will repeat it over and over again. Whenever we give a large pocket of money to a group of individuals without oversight, we wind up in a deficit. Now, these groups, if you look at them closely and you Google the supporters and you Google in, for example, the Sierra Club and the United Nations, you'll find that they're all connected. 
Well, what does the United Nations think about private land? In the UN Habitat Preamble, they state that land should not be considered as an ordinary asset controlled by individuals because that creates income inequality and a social injustice. After all, if I have 10 acres and you only have two, then that's unfair and socially unjust. Nobody looks to see what I've done to accumulate that 10 acres or perhaps your choice of choosing two acres. It doesn't matter. It's looked at in a whole. So these groups believe that private land should be removed from the individual and no longer held as private, but they should be put in a format for the collective. Thank you, Karen. Would you like to make a closing statement? Yes, I would. It is so important that we pay attention to this amendment and make sure that it never gets passed. Our private property, our birthright, your children's heritage are at risk if this amendment passed, passes. Please make sure that you contact all your friends that live in the state of Florida and do investigation on this amendment and vote no on November 4th.